Hi and welcome back to a new video. There is a company which is called Regner Cooling. And as you might notice by how I pronounce the name, it's a German brand. And they make cases, or he's making cases. I'm not sure if it's just a single guy, but they are selling a case, a specific water cooling case, which was already like introduced end of last year, for 1700 euro. When I saw it, I was like, that's certainly interesting, also quite expensive, and I couldn't resist to order one. And it's here. Yeah. <sighs> that is just way too heavy. I just checked again and noticed that the case is listed with a weight of 21 kilogram just for the product itself. That also explains why I had a lot of fun putting it on the table. Videos and projects like this always involve high investments. And that's only possible because we have very supportive and great sponsors, such like Hetzner. And I want to inform you that currently Hetzner still has a special offer for the dedicated AX servers, which feature AMD Ryzen CPUs without setup fee. For example, for the AX41, which is using the Ryzen 3600 and 64GB of memory, you will save 39 euro. And for example, if you use the AX101, which is featuring the Ryzen 5950X and 120GB of ECC memory, you will save even 99 euro. Hetzner is currently also celebrating the 25 years anniversary of their business. Congratulations from my side and currently Hetzner is running a giveaway for the celebration and if you are a customer at Hetzner or a future customer then you can participate in the giveaway. You can for example win a TV or some drones so that should definitely be interesting. You can find links for the giveaway and also for the AX servers in the description down below. First impression just of the packaging itself. We have this golden Regner, Regner cooling logo on the side very high quality and as you can see it states the case is made in Germany which used to be a big thing and I mean nowadays I don't think there's any case that's made in Germany everything is made somewhere in Asia so that is pretty unique for the moment you can be quite happy that it's not possible to smell over YouTube because I can smell that this has been freshly painted and that's also one of the unique features when you order a case there then you get to select the case color and you can select any color you want like literally out of like hundreds of color codes you can select like i don't know neon green or like blue or pink whatever i picked white the reason why i picked a white case is not only the personal preference if i would just go by that then it would also probably be a black case but simply for doing the youtube videos a white case is so much easier to film, so much better for you to get an impression of what a case looks like because on a black case a lot of details would simply get lost on the camera itself. Small detail on the bottom. The way they made the logo, it's also some kind of like shiny foil thing. Looks quite nice. 1700 euro for a case is definitely a lot, like really a lot. And for this kind of pricing you should expect absolute perfection. From form over function over like style, quality, everything has to be perfect. That's why I think we will just work our way through, like starting from the outside appearance, like the, the painting maybe, and then go to the internals. That's also something I don't even really know how the case is built internally because the homepage of them is pretty yeah, difficult. They only have render images of the case, not real product images. And it's pretty hard to tell how the case is actually built inside. But that's why we are here, to test it. Starting from the front, the paint looks pretty decent. Like the front cover is made pretty well. Also, I like how they designed it with those triangle shapes on the front. Like, I'm not sure if that's intake or outtake, but like for ventilation, those triangles look pretty nice. Then there's one thing, the sides, like this side and the right side, those are passive radiators. These should be for cooling the case. And obviously, I mean, any like symmetric thing will always stand out from this. Because you can see, for example, this lamella here is bent slightly to the right. Like not really bent, but you can see that there is a bit of a difference between these right here. And that's something that's definitely difficult to, to control. That's also complaining on a very high level, but it's also a very expensive case, right? And then also the paint inside 
of the structure inside of the lamella. Probably also quite difficult to do, but not perfect. Talking about the connectivity, we have the power button, we have a USB type A, dual audio jacks and a USB type C. Another thing is if you look from the front, like from the side, totally fine, but from the front, why are these connectors not in line? Like not even the power button. Once you see it, you can never unsee it again. But now let's check the back side of the case. We have a be quiet 140 millimeter fan in the center. That's the area where in a normal case you would have the expansion slots, like the output of the VGA, for example. Even though this looked like accessories from the weight, this could be some kind of like water cooling fitting. One thing I definitely want to highlight is the manual. You can see it was done with the attention to a lot of details. Even the torque is listed for like the individual screws, like let's say for those M3 screws six times for disassembly of like the mainboard tray probably or like the internal, I don't know, wall. It's listing at max torque of 0.5 newton meters. So that is done quite nicely. A lot of very well made drawings. And indeed we found some fittings included with some screws. For this assembly, the manual states that you simply, without removing any screws, have to pull up the, yeah, that is very heavy. Pull up the radiator and pull it to the side. Interesting. I didn't even know that the tubing and everything was included. So that's a quite nice surprise. I already removed these two tubes from the radiator on the side. So they were screwed in here removed both because I wanted to see like how is the radiator built? What is the flow inside? Is it like a, a big X C? Is it just going from here to here? Which is obviously not going to be the case, but I have no idea how this radiator is built internally. About one hour later, I got in contact with them and asked what about the radiator? How is it built? And then I also measured the weight of the side panel and it's seven kilogram. So just the side panel alone with the radiator built in weights as much as some cases stand alone out there. So that is really, really heavy. Regarding the radiator, first of all, it starts with two channels going down parallel. And then we have some like snake motion inside, like all the way, all the way up here. And then it will go back over here and then you have this motion like a channel all the way down going back to the other side. So it is making use of the entire radiator surface. Going back to the case itself, I want to have a word on those tubings. This is for sure not the EK ZMT tubing. You can see it's, yeah, it's a bit harder than the EK ZMT tubing. Might be that I will change this. I'm not sure if I will use it or if I will exchange this with the EK tubing. I ordered some EK tubing. I also ordered EK fittings. So it could be that I'm going to replace this. I also ordered a C690 formula board, which I thought would fit perfectly with this build. You can also see this riser cable on the bottom, which indicates that the GPU will sit on the back side. In the back of the case, we can spot two additional 140 millimeter fans. Same thing again on this side, moved up the radiator, pulled it out. We have two tubes going to this radiator and also you can spot the riser cable is coming from the top, which means that the graphics card will sit upside down. So that's definitely going to be quite interesting. Talking about the GPU, that's actually a very good point because we will have to prepare a custom water-cooled GPU. Right here I have my 6900 XT Strix LC, which is an AIO cooled version, but those kind of GPUs are not really useful for a reviewer, at least for me. They're always more complicated if you want to use them in cases or even open bench, they're more complicated to use. But yeah, we will just use this custom water cooling block from EK to convert this from AIO to custom, and then we can try to fit this in the case. I also want to point out that my original plan was to have this video like complete with like custom water cooling testing of like a different loop and then inside the case to compare temperatures. But then now it's like Saturday afternoon and my C690 ASUS formula still didn't show up. It was supposed to arrive already yesterday, still didn't show up. So yeah, might have to split this up into two parts, but let's just see how far we can get. Since we're working on this anyway, we can also do a quick comparison regarding temperatures if you convert this from AIO to custom water cooling. The data we're taking for comparison are from 3D Mark Times by Extreme GT1 in a looped. You can see after about 15 minutes, 
it's about like 57 to maybe 58 degrees Celsius on GPU temperature and I saw between 69 and 73 on the hotspot. So that should be our baseline for conversion to custom water cooling. AIO cooler is already gone, card already cleaned. And here we have the backplate, it's a back version, just black anodized from EK. And same goes for the cooler, I also decided to go for the black version, which is just basically POM or like acetal in like a copper nickel plated version, simply because you will not be able to see the card in the case anyway, it doesn't have a like a window. And I think this kind of makes the card look a bit more high quality than just going for acrylic. Right now I'm placing the pads and also thermal paste on the GPU. And at this point I wanted to say something regarding thermal pad placements, because I saw this like done wrong in some videos or like forums. First of all, if you place thermal pads, you should only peel off one side first, like ideally the one which is a bit more rigid. For the EK pads, this is like the transparent film. You peel off this one, then you put on the thermal pad because if you remove both films first and put it on, then you will always somehow like stretch the pad a little bit, which will result in changing the height of the pad. You should always avoid that. Always make sure to peel off one side first, place it on there, and then you have to remove the second film. That can be quite annoying. But from my experience, if you use a well-made tweezer, then you can easily just go to one of the edges and then peel off the film. And the cooler is mounted and the backplate as well. Again, testing this card now for about 20 to 30 minutes. And obviously the resulting temperature will depend on the radiator surface used. In this case, it's a 360 radiator. But in the end, the resulting temperature is still about eight to 10 degrees Celsius lower, depending if you look at GPU temperature or the hotspot temperature. And also the frequency is a bit more stable than with the AIO. Which also means that technically speaking, the AIO cooling, the stock cooling of the Strix LC, is not even bad. I mean, it's eight to 10 degrees Celsius difference. And let's be honest, for pure gaming operation, this should not really matter. But then on the other hand, for custom water cooling, you have all the benefits we are all familiar with. Like you can choose how much radiator surface you can utilize in your case, maybe two 360, maybe three 360s, and this way have lower fan speed and everything. So obvious reasons don't have to talk about them. I just reached out to Regner Cooling again regarding mixing aluminium and copper in one cooling loop. Because you all know that if you run naked copper and naked aluminium in one loop, it is very easy to come across corrosion after several weeks or months. But then he stated that the radiator is coated, like anti-corrosion coating, but I guess it's just like thick anodizing. There is a normal anodizing process, which is typically used for like visual purposes to have a specific color for aluminium, like blue or something like that. And then there's also like in, in German, you call it hard anodizing, which basically means that you're building up a much, much thicker layer of aluminium oxide on top of the aluminium, which really helps protecting like the aluminium and also uh, prevent it from any kind of corrosion. I guess that's what I did with this radiator. And then it will also probably depend what kind of fluid you will use, what kind of liquid. So I decided to just go for Aqua Computer Double Protect, that should certainly help. We will also know, like long experience wise, we will figure out if it helps or not, because my plan is to use this rig as a new render rig for our video editing. Okay, so next Wednesday, we will continue with the video regarding the very expensive case. So waiting for some of the components. Then we will also go in more detail about like the build quality and also what else is included, because there's also something I quickly want to highlight. The case, even though it costs 1700 euro, it still includes few components we have to take into account. For example, there is an EK pump reservoir combination inside. We have all the fittings included, we have the tubing included. Basically, we also have two huge radiators included. So if we would want to compare this to a normal custom water cooling loop, we would have to buy like two 360s with fans, the pump reservoir combination, tubing, fittings and everything. So I guess that's about 400 euro, which you could save over just buying the custom water cooling components. But still, then you're left with 1300 euro for a case, which is enormous. And yeah, in the next video, we will definitely talk more in detail about the quality of the case, what kind of benefits we have, like how we can build inside. I'm still waiting for some components like the motherboard, and then we will figure out what the case really has to offer will definitely be interesting. 
I also know that if you manufacture in Germany, you have much higher labor costs, uh, you have much higher development costs, manufacturing costs, which definitely adds up to competing with Asia. That's something we also have to take into account. That's also what we like struggle with on a daily basis with uh, Grizzly, like manufacturing the contact frame, for example. If you source everything in Germany and manufacture in Germany, it's much more expensive than like outsourcing to Asia, but we want to keep knowledge here. Like also offer workplaces in Germany that definitely, yeah, adds up to the price. So I can give that to him, but still 1300 euro, like in addition will definitely be quite interesting. Okay, so next Wednesday, we will continue with the video. Thanks for tuning in, see you next time. Bye-bye.